So Piers Morgan and his obsession with tearing down uh, Meghan Markle. So that's what the video, the video, if I could speak, that's what the video would be about. If you like the video, I hope you will like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. It just makes an awful big difference. And thank you very much for watching. And this is my journey through tarot. Come on. What is the obsession with uh, Meghan Markle regarding Piers uh, Morgan? Why can't he quit her? So we'll see what the cards tell us about that. Okay, so Piers. In 1965, he was born in Surrey, and he's his, and he was named Piers Stefan O'Meara. O'Meara is his last name. On March 30th, uh, that's when he was born, so he's a Pisces. And his dad was an Irish dentist. His mom was an Englishwoman. And months after his birth, they moved to East Sussex. His dad died when he was when Boris uh, or Piers, I'm sorry, was 11 months old. And his mom remarried to a Welsh. A pub owner slash landlord slash meat distributor and with the last name of Morgan. Piers's career. He first worked for nine months at Lloyd's of London and studied germ journalism at Harlow College. Now in 1985 he joined the Surrey and South London newspaper group and then in 1988 he freelanced at the Sun and was considered um, skilled at self-publicity. In 1994 Rupert Murdoch appointed the 29 year old uh, Piers as editor of the uh, News of the World. And in 1995, Piers quit after publishing photographs of the Earl of Spencer's wife leaving an addictive disorders clinic. Murdoch says Piers had said that Piers went too far, but privately apologized to him. Uh, Piers left for the Daily Mirror, and then 1996, as a guest on the satirical news quiz, Have I Got News for You, if you've seen that, he was accused of having the host followed and watching his house. Now, 2000, which is interesting when you consider the Piers, the Meghan Markle question. Now, in 2000, the Daily Telegraph revealed that he bought 20,000 pounds of a computer company's shares before the paper printed the, that the stock was a good buy. So kind of insider knowledge, uh, insider trading even perhaps, that's what we call it in the U.S. 2003, Jeremy Clarkson, you know Jerry, Jeremy Clarkson, dumped water on him uh, due to photos that Piers published in the mirror. And 2004, at the British Press Awards, Jeremy Clarkson, and uh, punched him three times. So that's a reminder of this whole Will Smith thing that's going on, uh, the Will Smith slap. Piers was fired from the Daily Mirror for authorizing fake photos of the Abu Ghraib, uh, Abu Ghraib uh, torture. And then in 2005, he again bought 67,000 pounds of stock under his wife's name. It was another insider trading tip off, probably. And 2006, Piers was a judge on American's Got Talent. In 2007, he was a judge on British Britain's Got Talent. 2008, he won the U.S. celebrity version of Trump's Apprentice, uh, who um, Trump praised Piers as ruthless, arrogant, evil, and obnoxious, and Trump would know. 2009, Piers wrote in a magazine that Jimmy Savile said his TV shows were brilliant. Okay, Jimmy Savile said his TV shows were brilliant, and Piers said that he had always loved Jimmy Savile. But then in 2012, following Savile's uh, sexual abuse against kids uh, debacle, uh, Piers said they had never met. Uh, then a witness at an inquiry recalled how Piers outlined how to hack a cell phone. So in 2012, actor Hugh Grant, uh, a phone hack victim, uh, showed an interview with Piers and Charlotte Church, also a phone hacking victim, Charlotte Church was. And this is where Piers explained how to avoid answer, answer phone messages listened to by journalists. He was telling Charlotte, giving her a tip. I wonder why, how he knew that. 2015, Piers guest hosted five episodes of Good Morning Britain with uh, Susanna Reid, who had said, you go into battle with him every morning. 2016, Piers, a permanent resident of the USA, said he uh, would not vote for Trump, but he didn't mention that he's not a US citizen and not qualified to vote anyway. Uh, he predicted Trump's win and described himself as a close friend. And on American talk show Real Time with Bill Maher, an Australian comedian uh, named uh, Jim Jeffries swore at Piers over his defense of Trump. Novelist J.K. Rowling, 
Okay, said watching peers being told to F off on live TV is exactly as satisfying as imagined. And in 2018, peers presented a TV show, President Trump, the Piers Morgan interview for ITV, that was the title of the thing, which was a Trump love fest. Piers even formally applied for White House Chief of Staff. Now in 2020, during the pandemic, Piers said Trump's idea of ingesting bleach was bat shit crazy. I'm just going to say it. And Trump unfollowed Piers on Twitter. And then uh, Piers was briefly a friend of Meghan Markle who cut him off early in their relationship. Uh, and uh, with her, her relationship with Prince Harry, she cut Piers off really quick right away. And Piers has then, ever since, Piers has criticized them ever since and says they are hypocrites. Meghan is a social, social climber. They're spoiled brats. And he was surprised it took her so long to get Prince Harry to ditch the family, the monarchy, and the military, and his country. After Piers doubted the Oprah interview regarding her mental health issues and suicidal thoughts, he walked off set and quit the program. We all saw it on TV. Alex uh, Beresford and uh, Megan said, said that Megan is entitled to avoid him. And uh, she hasn't said anything about Piers, but he continues to trash her. And then Steve Coogan said Piers is the problem with the British tabloid media in bullying Megan. 2021 complaints about Piers reached a record-breaking total of 57,000 complaints. And uh, regarding the USA insurrection, Pierce said Trump was mentally unfit and the pandemic and election loss had sent him nuts. And Pierce regretted uh, supporting Trump. Now, although Pierce's uh, primary residence is in Kensington, he splits time between Los Angeles and a home in East Sussex. So now let's see what the cards do. Okay, so a viewer has asked, and this is Brenda Smith. Thank you very much, Brenda Smith, for asking this question. Um, Piers Morgan, um, what is his obsession with Meghan? So I'm not sure how the cards are going to be able to address this, but that's the question. Piers Morgan's obsession with Meghan Markle. What is that about? So Piers Morgan's obsession with Meghan Markle. What in the world is that about? Uh, Piers Morgan's obsession with Meghan Markle. And I have to admit, I have a feeling about this, and I hope I'm able to suppress it sufficiently to just let the cards tell the story. So, I mean, just whatever the cards come out, that's I'll read what they are, and we'll see if it starts to make sense uh, for some sort of question. But before we do any of that, let's take a moment for meditation. Okay. So Piers Morgan's obsession, it seems like, with uh, Meghan Markle. Piers Morgan's obsession with Meghan Markle. I feel like the cards are ready. Okay, six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Piers Morgan's obsession with Meghan Markle. Someone feels like he's moved, even moved to the U.S. to follow her somehow. You know, he has home, a home here also, I understand. Uh, the signified card of this question, what about Piers Morgan's obsession with Meghan Markle? Well, we start out with this three of wands, long-term plans. Uh, wands are plans, actions, forward motion, and uh, three of wands is long-term plans. So is he, is he uh, hitching his uh, wagon to um, the Sussexes in vision of some long-term plan. Huh. The um, challenge to that then is this five of coins and the five of coins is being left out in the cold. Well, yes, and coins are value. Um, money too could be in this case, but uh, yes, yeah, so this five of coins, the challenge to this long-term plans is feeling left out in the cold. So if he's looking for some sort of financial future, a story that he can follow that will keep giving dividends over and over again, that could be Megan, but he seems to be left out in the cold. The bottom of this reading, the basis of this reading, with this King of Cups, is a cups of emotion, compassion, and um, and so uh, uh, it looks like this is Piers. This is Piers as the King of his cups, the King of his emotional um, outbursts. His uh, career seems to be based on some sort of compassionate um, um, energy. Past to this reading for Piers' obsession with Megan is uh, this Nine of Swords, and the Nine of Swords is really... Um, just, oh wait, let me think about this. The Nine of Swords. Let me get my cheat sheet out to make sure I get this exactly right. Nine of Swords. Where are you, Nine of Swords? 
So I have depression. Yeah, yeah. So the Nine of Swords is just nightmare, depression, guilt. So that's the past of this reading. Is I wonder if he does have a conscience after all. The sky of this reading uh, is the Six of Wands, and the, um, the Six of Wands, my goodness, my brain has just gone blank for a moment here. The Six of Wands, I have to look again. Six of Wands, oh, and the Travel. Good news, empowerment, Six of Wands. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, of course it is. This is uh, victory. You know, this is uh, getting things right, moving forward, me making your plans work. So up in the sky of this thing is uh, that Six of Wands, that victory. Very interesting. So he is um, one of those people who is blessed with some sort of victorious uh, um, angel almost looking out for him. And the likely outcome of the first part of this is his page of wands. Uh, the page is the very least important of the uh, royal cards. The wands, of course, are actions, plans, forward movement. And so it looks like all of this just comes down to a very weak uh, message of a uh, plan, kind of. The last part of this for Piers Morgan's obsession with Megan. The self of that very question is this Wheel of Fortune. Yep, um, this story is the Wheel of Fortune. He's going to pin himself to, uh, see where it leads him. And uh, and most of the time, where this wheel, la wheel lands, you know, there's, there's uh, advantage. There's just a small area in this wheel at the bottom when you have to worry. So yeah, the very self of that question is the Wheel of Fortune of Piers' own fortunes. Uh, the um, environment that that's in with this King of Wands. All right, plans again. Um, this was King of Cups. Now we're into the planning, the King of Wands. Again, Piers, making sure that he has the plan and he's going to follow it. The hopes and the fears for that question is right here in this uh, priestess. So this is the second card uh, in the Major Arcana. And so she has all the knowledge. She has all the uh, information and the wherewithal to uh, to manifest something interesting for peers. And then the um, likely outcome of the whole thing with the Six of Swords is moving out of troubled water. Interesting that this would be the final outcome. You know, the Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And uh, the Six of Swords, like I said, represents almost a rebirth, moving yourself into something uh, uh, safer. So we'll read it again. Um, Piers Morgan's obsession with Megan. What is that about? Well, it's the Three of Wands. It's long-term planning. That's what it's about. And uh, what's it challenged by? It's challenged by this Five of Coins value, feeling left out in the cold. He'd be felt left out in the cold uh, in Megan's world and uh, doesn't want to be left out of the money uh, making value of stories around her. The base of this uh, thing with is, is Piers Morgan in this King of Cups, really uh, understanding that he's the king of that emotion, compassion, getting all that out there in front of everybody. And then the um, past of this reading with this Nine of Swords is that it's uh, the past to a point has been a nightmare. Okay, truth, justice, rules, and law have been a difficult thing to handle. The sky of this reading with this uh, Four of Wands are small, smallish kind of celebrations towards something larger uh, in the future. Uh, I was thinking, uh, dividing this almost as a six of wands, but really four of wands are, uh, wands are uh, plans, actions, forward movement, and the four of wands is like a smallish celebration because there's a bigger celebration on ahead. And so that's what this is, a smallish uh, celebration. So it'll be lucky for him, but uh, maybe not in the big way that he'd hoped. Uh, and then the final outcome for this whole thing with this page of wands is understanding that uh, this king of cups, uh, really, his plan is a very weak one. The um, self of that very question for uh, what's with his obsession with Megan is the wheel of fortune. Of course it is. And then the um, environment that that's in, though, is this king of wands. He's the king of his plans. He's going to make this stuff happen. The hopes and the fears, though, is with this uh, two uh, in the major arcana, this uh, high priestess, is... Um, you know, I think this is on the side of Megan, you know, knowing how to counteract um, these attacks, really. And then the, um, so that's his fear. And then the uh, likely outcome of the whole thing is this uh, Six of Swords moving out of troubled water, rebirth, truth, justice, rules, and law. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, there's always going to be a market for salacious gossip, and, um, and that's what's going to be a savior, I think. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. 
Okay, so the Uncommon Tarot. This is uh, the Uncommon Tarot is by Shaheen uh, Miro, uh, who is an intuitive energy worker and artist, with commentary by uh, Teresa Reed, who is the known as the Tarot Lady from a lot of blogs, the websites, and podcasts. And Uncommon is even defined here. You can just barely see it, but it says uh, not ordinary, remarkably exceptional, sort of as you would see in a dictionary. Uh, so here we go. It's a nice box. Uh, it's got that nice little clasp, which you don't often see on a smaller, and it's like you might expect a perfume to come in this box. It's that kind of quality. Okay, and the material is really, has a nice sheen. So it's a beautiful piece of packaging. You know, at least you felt like, um, you know, you're getting a little something for this. The um, inside does have that definition on this foil, silver uh, foil uh, thing, uh, uncommon, how to pronounce, ordinary, remarkable, uh, exceptional. And then the book is really a nice little booklet. It's uh, personalized by the artist. It's got some good information in here about him and the tarot lady. Uh, Teresa Reed, and um, a little story about why he decided to make these tarot cards, and it goes really back to his youth. Uh, his mother, in front of her children, she would lay out a few tarot cards on the table and ask what they saw, and the cards became kind of a moving uh, picture book uh, for the family. And you'll see what I mean uh, with his design of these cards. Okay, I'll just put this away right back in there. So, uh oh, I think I've got some cards backwards here, just like I do. Okay, so they are, uh, as you can see, silver foil gilded. Um, and then they've got a nice weight to them. They're not particularly heavy. They're just about right, actually. And just a typical dark, kind of mysterious back. The front of the cards, though, is beautiful. The images go from, you know, edge to edge. It's a nice, glossy, deep, uh, quality feeling card and with beautiful, rich colors. And uh, Shaheen's Un Uncommon Tarot is a contemporary re-imaging of the Rider Weight Tarot uh, with a collage work uh, melange, uh, rich with worldly people, uh, places and settings. I mean, you can see. So they're beautiful, beautiful cards. They're not hard to use because in the bottom it just tells you what that card is. And then you get to take a minute and then pick out the elements in here that are pertinent to what you're uh, reading about. So uh, beautiful cards. This is always a good way to spread the cards out and get your energy into them or get them warmed up for the day. Or maybe you're working with somebody, your friends are sitting around, you can let them mix them up if you don't want to have them shuffle. And uh, so that is the Uncommon Tarot. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.